Welcome everyone. My name is Annabelle Quintero. Thank you so much for joining us where women come together embodying the feminine divine and we can come and speak about solutions to co-create a new future that will center women and children. Today, I have the honor of having Erica Marie Wigley here. Thank you for being here, Erica. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Erica is the chief speaker coach at Rise 360 Coaching and Consulting, a leading agency that ignites storytelling and speaker coaching for companies and individuals that need private sessions for presentations, press events, sales trainings, client customer attraction, and of course, audience connection. At the beginning of her career, Erica got her start as a registered nurse and pharmaceutical sales rep for a top Fortune 100 companies. She went on to become the top sales rep for her region and nationwide. She later returned to nursing and worked with the U.S. military by working at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, the Pentagon, Fort Belvoir, Joint Base Andrews, and Quantico. During her time there, she noticed that her patients needed additional services beyond the scope of medicine. It was then that she started Rise360 Coaching and Consulting to serve a broad range of clients. Just That's just phenomenal. <laughs> that is, I love, I love hearing this life this life story in your bio. Thank you, Erica. Erica's coaching and consulting style is lasered on using storytelling as a visual map for businesses to connect with their clients and customers. She trains leaders on how to use the art of communication and the science of speaking as a powerful tool to influence and create connection. What makes her company unique is a combination of mindset coaching, meditation, and speaker training to bring out the best in her clients while producing top results. Oh my goodness, Erica. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> it always is. Every guest has just this amazing lived experience. That's why I love doing this. I always learn so much more about folks. So tell me how did you get to a place where you are following your heart and and with 360 consulting Ooh. <laughs> oh boy that's a short question with a long <laughs> answer <laughs> but let me uh hopefully explain uh without it taking too too long I initially started out my career as a nurse and that transitioned into working for a pharmaceutical company as a sales rep. And during that time, I learned so much about business that I was able to parlay that and start my own company. So my first company was actually Plush Skin and I pitched my product to Whole Foods Market and they accepted <laughs> ah, on their it. shelf, yes, um, in the DMV area. At the time I was living in Maryland. And I was so excited about the opportunity that I realized that following your heart opens up so many doors for you. Mm. At the time I, was having a very difficult time dealing with my divorce and trying to reconfigure my life and what that would look like and for my children and wanting to make a better life for us. And I had a lot of question marks, quite honestly. At work, I was doing well, but in my personal life, I felt disconnected. So this journey to entrepreneurship was really based on me wanting to live my truth and follow that truth to be able to express myself to its fullest potential. 
And in doing that, a miracle happened. The miracle was my company <laughs> downsized. And after the third downsizing in one year, our entire division got wiped out. I thought, okay, God, this must be a sign <laughs> that it's time for me to step out on faith and start my company. So I did. And within a matter of actually three years, a little less than three years, I was able to have my products on their shelf at Whole Foods Market. But here's the thing. This is the, the, the interesting part about entrepreneurship is that with each step that you take, it reveals something else. And while I felt like I was living my truth in creating the products, selling the products, and meeting with customers that would come into Whole Foods Market and educating them on my product, which was a part of a marketing strategy, if you will, for Whole Foods, for local vendors. One of the things that I found missing was my need and interest in helping people to navigate their own path. At Whole Foods, a lot of the questions that I would receive from clients or really customers was that, how did you do it? Here I am, a Black woman <laughs> with products sold on their shelf, and I would hear that question often. How did you do it? How did you take your idea and be able to allow that idea to have wings and now be sold in their stores? And I had so much love and compassion for the people that would stop by my table to listen to my product story and also try the products, which really was the intention was for them to try it and then eventually purchase it. But I thought, how can I do this on a more full-time basis? But this really was just a thought at the time. And to be quite honest, when I first got divorced, I knew that I wanted to serve people at that capacity, but I didn't know really what that looked like. And so here I was over 10 years later being reminded of my initial thought and feeling of helping others. And so I just allowed that thought to kind of remain there. I didn't do anything with it at the time. And I was working now for a different company. And this time um, it was a medical device company. I was traveling a lot. I was exhausted and I was not in full alignment with the, the company culture. Uh, the company culture was not in alignment with me and I was not in alignment. And so I decided to go back to nursing, leave the sales capacity alone and really go back to nursing. And that turned out to be one of the best decisions of my life because in going back to nursing, it allowed me to care for people. And in caring for people at the highest capacity, it then reminded me of that promise I made to myself of helping others. And in doing the work of being a nurse, it then parlayed into me wanting to start my own agency for coaching. So and that was a long <laughs> answer, but in following my heart, if, if you notice, it's like life presents itself with ebbs and flows and ups and downs and trials and tribulations. And it's during those times of uncertainty that you have to look at what's important. You have, you have to look at what's important in order to find your joy and to live your truth. Unless, and if you don't, then you're stuck doing something that you don't love for the rest of your life. And that was no longer an option for me. I wanted more for my life. And I was willing to take a major pay cut in order to live that truth. Mm, that is so powerful, Erica. I loved what you said, too, is that each time 
that you reach a certain level in business or in your life, right? But you said business, something is revealed to you. Yeah. yeah. I think that is just, I love that because I see that even when we are evolving as people or if our healing is evolving, like you heal a certain part of yourself, but then you have to go to another part of, of that inner work to, to get more whole. And it's not like you ever stop, but, and it's not, and, and you, you know, and, and people really make strides and you can be a leader mm -hmm. and still hold being the student of life. Mm, that part, being the student of life. Yeah, we're always a student of life, even when we don't realize it. <laughs> even when we don't realize it, we always are. And how was that for you as well to, um, you know, take that pay cut to have that lifestyle because I, there's always some compromise in, in any situation. And uh, how, how, how was that point um, in your life or in with others in your life as well? That was difficult. First, the initial decision was easy because I knew that I didn't want to continue living a life that was disconnected from my truth and my joy and my happiness. I wanted to be there for my sons. And I was traveling so much on the road so much that I would miss a lot of that. And I just didn't want to live that kind of life. And then also the culture, the, the work culture was very toxic. And there was a high turnover rate of people resigning, people filing complaints, people, um, not being in alignment with their own joy and happiness working in that culture. So there was a lot happening and I knew that there had to be something better than that. Mm. Here's how life works. <laughs> During that time working for that company, I was sitting in the waiting room waiting for a physician to be done. And as I was waiting, the receptionist came out and said to me, Erica, the physician will be with you shortly. She said, but what are you reading? I noticed that you're reading a book. And so at the time, I was preparing for a presentation for Mind Body Week because I was a Reiki master and I was ah! <laughs> <laughs> Reiki. I had no idea. <laughs> of course you are. Of course. <laughs> and I was asked to speak for the first time uh, for Mind Body Week in Maryland. And so I was excited for the opportunity and I, I was, you know, waiting, you know, sitting there in the waiting room waiting. So I decided to, for the first time, pull out my book which I had never done before because I kept those two worlds very separate. I had my corporate job and I had my, um, my life within this wellness space, right? Mm -hmm. Never combine the two. But I was at my wit's end at that job and I just said, you know what? I'm waiting anyway. <laughs> Why not pull out my book and just prepare for what I'm about to do um, later on that evening. And so I did. And when she asked the question, initially, my heart was like beating because I thought, oh my gosh, you know, here I am. I pulled the book out during my work hours and, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to come of this. Of course I was overthinking, overthinking the whole thing, because, you know, as I said, I never, I never combined those two worlds before. And number one, that was the issue. Yes. Yeah. The and that was the issue. Because Absolutely. You said before that you felt disconnected. Yes. Earlier on in, in, yes. in what you were sharing in your story. And then now yes. again, here you are, uh, not even wanting to pull out your book. So the name of your book is um, How Are You Treating Life? Well, actually, yeah. So that came. Uh, Prior to, I believe that came maybe during the same time I started that job, I 
wrote a book with my mentor. But that's separate. That was a yeah, a different book. But yes, it's called How Are You Treating Life? How are you treating life? Yeah. I, I mean, even that question and <laughs> it's like, I love it. How are you treating life? It's almost like you could ask yourself that every day. <laughs> every day you could ask yourself that. And I almost like it better than how are you doing? <laughs> exactly. And it's so funny because that is exactly what I would say to my mentor. Um, I would say, you know, hi, Mirdad, how are you doing? And he would say, Erica, the question really is, how are you treating life? And it would always hit me right at the level of the heart. And he mm -hmm. said, be right. How and are you treating? How are you treating life? Right. And so it's I such a mind shift. Yeah, total mind shift. Complete, complete, complete and utter mind shift. And what was happening to me over the years is that. I was beginning to understand the importance of being connected to my purpose. So what I thought initially that divorce was my version of rock bottom, I realized it was a blessing in disguise because it allowed me to see the life I had created that wasn't in alignment with my truth. And now I had to map out this new life that I knew nothing about. And it was scary. And I was almost 300 miles away from my family. And, and it was tough. And so just to flash forward that moment in which she asked me, you know, mm -hmm. reading, and it was my Reiki book, she then says to me, wow, Erica, she said, you know Reiki? And I thought, oh my gosh, does she really know Reiki too? <laughs> In my mind, that's what I'm thinking. And she said, our physician also does Reiki. The same <gasps> physician that I was waiting on, the same physician <laughs> That, you know, here I, so of he, course he is, <laughs> of course he is. So it was as though God, life, universe wa wanted me to understand that I didn't have to separate my personal and my professional life, that they can become one, right? And so that was my first understanding of the importance of living your truth, fully living your truth. Now, here's what's so interesting. That same woman recommended me for another position. So I ended up leaving that job, <laughs> stepped at the position at Walter Reed, <laughs> and as a nurse, full-time nurse, and I was able to launch their telemedicine program with a physician. His name is Dr. Christopher Spivak. He is absolutely amazing. It was one of the best career decisions I made while financially extremely difficult because it was a major pay cut. And let me tell you, <laughs> there were months that I was like, Lord, okay, please make a way. <laughs> Following my truth and all, but Lord, please make a way because there has to be something better than this. And absolutely. so it wasn't easy. It yeah, wasn't of easy. course not. You know, it, it absolutely wasn't easy. And there were moments that I really started to question if I could financially continue to do this. And so with I, just, I want to ask, say one thing yeah. about that, because um, look how the more that you integrated your personal life and your professional life and how things keep evolving, yeah. no matter what. They, you know, like we, we're, we're in the struggle. And so we just look around and think about the conditions around us right but in the midst of it all we're actually becoming really our wholesome self yes and there is no real separation even though at times society tells us that you have to keep these two different these two right. separated you know right. you, you're human but when you go into the workplace, please don't bring your emotions into right. the workplace. Please don't bring in your family 
which is completely why I feel most of us get to a place where we are dismembered because it's like, that's not how we, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very, um, just distractive, just limited way of showing up. And it has defined the way we have to show up. And so, and so tell me more, tell me how this keeps evolving because I, I love it. <laughs> yes. And talking about evolving, that is how I got my idea to step out on faith and start my coaching and consulting business. While working at Walter Reed and Fort Belvoir, the Pentagon, Andrews Air Force Base and Quantico, I love that job. When I tell you I love that job, while financially it was tough, I absolutely loved that job, loved the patients that I worked with, loved the people that I worked with at each location. It was, it healed my soul, actually. So while I had patients and I was treating them and helping them, it actually healed me too. Look at that. And that's the beauty of that work. And here's the thing. While being there, I was also able to do Reiki on my patients. <gasps> oh. They granted space for me to do it. And so I did Reiki. I did bio. I was trained in biofeedback. That is phenomenal work. I mean, if you know anything about biofeedback, phenomenal. So I was trained in biofeedback. I was trained in battlefield acupuncture and oh. was a holistic, holistic, integrative environment in terms of helping patients treat their pain in unconventional ways, right? Absolutely. And, 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 and beyond yeah. unconventional, yeah. I would say, people say alternative, unconventional, but really in ancient ways absolutely in ancient absolutely. ways and and we have to name it yeah. because this society has done a really great job <laughs> a phenomenal job yeah. of taking away the practices and the medicines and the modalities that are ancient that have always served humanity. That's right. And, and make sure the insurance company is not going to pay for it because right. there's no evidence. But then, like, how much evidence do you need if it worked for like hundreds, if not thousands of years? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And here's the thing that's what I loved about the military is that they were completely on board with it. Well, probably because also the really? trauma. Yeah. Of war yeah. demands it. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. Even as a September 11th survivor, it was only one day for me, but I prayed, I was praying and on my knees and, and I could yes. not figure out mm. what I was experiencing with PTSD because I, I didn't know what that was. It was four right. words and then it became four letters and I had to jump into my cultural blind spot and do a 10 day meditation and experience a sweat lodge. And that's what I, that's where I got to this place because I realized that there's so much healing that we need to do and it will require us to integrate our full selves and integrate our ancient modalities again. Yeah, we, we're returning to our essential self. I love right. that. Yeah, returning to our essential self. And that's what I learned from Deepak Chopra. And in that powerful training as a meditation instructor, which I eventually became certified in, that that is really the truth of who we are. We can't run from the truth of who we are, right? Well, we sure have tried. And I think tried. no matter what, we're circling back to it. <laughs> Even if we're crawling on our knees. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that's where our joy is, right? When we think about why are we unhappy in life? Why are we disconnected in the relationship that we're in? Right? Oh, why yeah. are we continuing to do things that are not in alignment with our truth? Yeah. In life and in society, we're 
we've built layers to cover up who we are. Oh, yeah. And so much escapism. Yeah. I'm like, how is it possible that us as Americans with so much oh. go out of our way yeah. to look forward to the weekend and yeah. escape with food or alcohol or drugs or, you know, sex or whatever it is. And because it's really a, a symptom of our unhappiness. Oh, that part, that part right there, right there. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I could talk forever with you. Oh my goodness. So I, I want to close with this question. Um, yeah. Since you, oh my goodness, you, you just, Oh, I, you have to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. There's so much to share. <laughs> but um, how do, what is one thing you feel that society could do to center women and children? Mm. One thing that society can do is to begin the educational system with meditation. Mm. And here's why I think this is important. It's important because you get to target both young girls and boys who will become older men and women, right? So it's something that can follow them throughout their lifespan. The other thing that's really powerful with meditation is that I've often equated it to an internal shower, mental shower. Oh, I love that. Yes. No different than taking a shower and cleaning yourself off, right? We do that anyway. That's external. But what about all of that junk and stuff that we're bringing with us, that invisible suitcase that we bring with us each and every day that no one knows about? What do we do with that? How do we clean that? And meditation is absolutely that tool that you can use to clean out your mind, get a break from your mind, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the other thing is that with meditation, oftentimes people think that it helps you to stop thinking. And that's really a false understanding of meditation. Meditation doesn't get you to stop thinking. We're humans and we're going to think, right? What it does is that it allows those thoughts to be like background music. Hmm. So just imagine a radio dial on 10. The more that you meditate, that sound all, all of a sudden becomes a little bit duller if you turn that down to about six to about five. It's still there, but now it's not impeding your presence, your this present moment, right? So if we were to train kids at a really young age on how to meditate, it will help them to be able to live life better, right? As we mm -hmm going to face some things and we need some tools in place to be able to deal with that. But if you are training the mind and that mind then trains the body, and what I mean by that is that everything that we think creates a physiological change. That's anger, that's depression, that's sadness, it's a whole slew of emotions. But if we're able to train the mind just enough, we can still the body. And instilling the body now, both to the body, you become an even more powerful person. Mm -hmm. Because you're operating at your center, you're operating at your core. And it helps to increase performance, it helps to increase productivity. Right? Because all of your energy is right in this moment. You're not focusing on the past. Right? You're not focusing on the future, but you're harnessing all of your power right here and now. So that is what I would do. I would 
if I could wave a magic wand, <laughs> I would yeah, have meditation in the educational system at a really early age and focus that throughout uh, the educational system, not just early, but throughout the educational system. And also train women on meditation, the power of meditation. Oh, absolutely. I always tell people that it's not it's not praying to another God. It is a modality. It is watching. I, I was trained more in Vipassana. So, um, and that was a 10 day sit that I had done. And it allowed me to understand my human behavior, to watch my mind, watch my emotions, watch where in my body, my bodily sensations. And sometimes it's a bodily sensation you get that reminds you of something and then you that emotion comes up and after the 11th i was just reacting react 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 and it wasn't until i could observe myself mm. and understand myself because i didn't even know that there were three pillars of human behavior like i didn't know mm. <laughs> and that's when i was like oh i can observe i can choose my response and not doing anything, choosing not to act is good. We don't need to act all the time. Sometimes we just need to carry it for a little bit and watch it go away. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just delighted to have this time with you, Erica, and let us know. Um, um, I heard you have a gift for some people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. So I am offering 30 minute connection calls with anyone that is in need of mindset coaching, speaker coaching and storytelling. I when love you're able to train the mind and body. You're able to create even more powerful stories because it's coming from the heart. So automatically the listener, the watcher, the viewer, the audience understands that and feels that because there's no separation between you and your story. You become the story itself. So I'm happy to do 30 minute connection calls with anyone that'd like to sign up. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll put the details below as well in the comments and any any upcoming events do you have any dates or upcoming events at all i always like to ask just in case i am actually speaking next month to a group of women entrepreneurs over 200 women <laughs> so yeah i am speaking with the uh, walker's legacy i believe it's called walker's legacy that sounds beautiful. Well, I hope people can join you and watch you and hear you speak. And it's been such a delight, Erica. Thank you so much. Um, and if anyone else, yes, I'll have her information and where you can get her book, which I also love. How are you treating life? <laughs> so it's just been an honor and let's continue on always coming together to really discuss and dialogue about solutions on how we can center women and children and really co-create the future we're all proud of. Mm, Thank you. Love that. Thank you for having me. <laughs>